Well, with legends and folk tales, um, which I've retold a lot, and I love doing it, um, I, I arrive at a situation, really, where I think that there's a story that needs to be told again. I think what happens very often with old stories is they feel old. They feel as if they're a bit for another time. The only reason so many of these wonderful stories are still going, now I've written Aesop's fables, well of course I didn't write them as his man called Aesop who wrote them as a Greek 2,000 years ago, but the only reason they're still around today is because people like me retell the stories for each generation and give it a new voice, a fresh voice, a distinctive voice, and pass the story on because they're such fantastic stories, really wonderful stories. Um, so I, I've done that a lot, and I've done it with our early poems in this country. I've done it with, with uh, Beowulf, uh, which, if you haven't read it, is the earliest horror book that was ever written. I mean, it is truly horrifying, um, but also a wonderful, wonderful story. And again, written by an anonymous person a thousand or more years ago. And then there's Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, one of those Arthurian tales, tales of King Arthur's round tables, which I used to hate as a child but I love that one in particular. So it's what you love that you want to retell. And then sometimes what happens is you come across a story like Hansel and Gretel, which sort of doesn't seem to work very well in its originals. I read the Brothers Grimm version of Hansel and Gretel and thought, well, actually, that's, it's a good story, I like it, but it could be better. And then I try to tell it my own way. Um, and I did the same thing with the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Um, I wanted to give it an, a new angle, a new vumpf for today. Um, and just recently, I've done something which I haven't done before, which is to retell a classic, but one that was written by someone whom we know. A man called Carlo Collodi wrote a book called Pinocchio, uh, well over a hundred years ago. It's the most famous book in all of Italy, and he's the most famous puppet, as you know, in all the world, Pinocchio. But the trouble is, I did some research and I discovered that most children, of course, have heard of Pinocchio. They know Pinocchio is a puppet. They've never read the book. They might have read a little adaptation of it when they were very little, but they've never read the original. And that is because the original is very difficult to read now because the language is different. Also, it's because when he wrote it, Carlo Collodi, all those years ago, wrote like many children's authors did. They used to write books for children to read to teach them lessons. So in the book, for instance, there's this wagging of the finger thing that goes on. Uh, you know, Pinocchio, if you tell a lie, your nose is going to grow very long. Well, that's in the story to try to persuade naughty boys not to tell lies. The trouble is you can't wag your fingers at children very much these days. They won't listen. They don't like being wagged at. So I thought, we'll tell it and tell it. And how would you tell it? Well, the film's been made. Walt Disney made the film. Uh, which is the all singing, all dancing version of it. So I'm thinking, what would... Ah, what would Pinocchio himself want? Well, actually, he'd be really cross. First of all, there's this Carlo Collodi, who wrote this story about him without even asking him. And he got some things wrong. Did you know that in the original story of Pinocchio, he hasn't even got a mother? And the other thing in the original story of uh, Pinocchio, during the thing, during the whole story, the whole idea is that he has to be good enough to become a boy? Good enough to become a boy? What world is he living in? Boys aren't good. And I don't think he'd want to have become a boy. He was really happy being a puppet. So I thought to myself, maybe you could become Pinocchio. Maybe you could write the story as Pinocchio. And you'd be really cross with Carlo Collodi for getting it so wrong. And the other thing you'd be cross about is that Walt Disney, who made the film, all singing, all dancing, think of the money he made out of me. Think of the money that Carlo Collodi made. Did they offer me any royalties? Did they consult me about my life? You'd be pretty indignant about this. So what would you do in the end as a 130-year-old puppet? You'd think, excuse me, I'm going to tell you the story my way, my story. I'm going to tell it. So I sat down as a 70-year-old git, 130-year-old puppet, and wrote the autobiography of Pinocchio. So you're going to have the unexpurgated version of his life, the unabridged version. It's Pinocchio's story of Pinocchio. That's what I try to do with old stories. It's to put them in a place now where children of today can uh, enjoy them. I hope that's what I've done. Mm -hmm.